Greetings guys! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Monette and this is my channel Evolve with Monette. I am so happy to share some energy with you today. For those of you that are new here, I am a professional intuitive empath and I want to jump right into the subject of the video. First of all, I want to say happy Black History. I will be saying that in every video every day of this month that I do put up. But what I want to say is I wanted to talk to you guys about mm, what happens when you drop whatever you think is a thing. So that's something that I've spent a lot of time on. There have been a lot of themes about that on this channel regarding what your manifestation is if you're letting go of a past relationship or friendship. So a lot of us ladies deal with that friendship transition and that's something that certainly happened for me this year is that I dealt with a whole situation with a friendship transition and I really had to find myself. But what I want you to understand is that the thing that you may not have been able to really embody in the friendship or the relationship, if it's romantic for you guys, is something you can embody in a different place. But you have to be open and you have to be willing to release whatever is the thing that you're fairly certain that you um, cannot let go of and definitely move into the place where you do release and move forward because there's beautiful blessings. So I want to tell you the story that God kind of worked with me on over the last few years. And it um, culminates with this beautiful bottle of gin for those of you guys can you see that that says hi claire castle this bottle of gin my sweet sweet divine feminines was a gift from a really nice friend a really sweet friend but i want to tell you why it's significant um well first of all if you know me i'm not a big drinker but when i do it's like that dos equis uh, thing if i am drinking it's gin <clears throat> okay i know that seems weird i'm a gin and tonic bombay sapphire i'm a stickler for a blue bottle um the bombay sapphire is a different color for those of you that are familiar but i thought god was so funny because this is like the classier elevated version um of this and uh it was super super excited about this. So let's talk about this. I had with one friend, uh, really loved the show Downton Abbey. Okay. And we binge watched that years after it was super, super popular when it was available on streaming services. And we would pretend and have the accents and we said we were going to go. Well, that person and I did the transition that I've talked about here. You guys know my story, but for those of you that don't, we transitioned out of the friendship. Uh, we spiritually passed away to each other and we evolved into different relationships and friendships that were better for us. Okay. So what I will say was one of the hallmarks of that friendship was me trying to get them into traveling, getting them to believe that manifestation was possible, that you can have anything and everything that you want, that there's no reason to say no, there's no reason to, to worry or to think that you cannot manifest your most ultimate desires. And so that was something that she struggled with. And while we watched the show, I said to her, wouldn't it be amazing if we went to High Clare Castle, which is where Downton Abbey was filmed, which is an actual place in London. And so, uh, in England rather. And so she looked it up, I do believe and whatnot, but I knew that it wouldn't really ever happen because the pattern with our trips and things is that if we did go, she would sabotage it midway through um, by terrible behavior and or just leaving and not really giving any explanation because she wanted to control things. I was dealing with a covert narc. So I also was also trying to foster family with this person and all of that stuff. You guys know my story. I don't want to focus on the past of it. I want to talk about the future of it. So after Downton Abbey happened, they came out with the movie years later. If you guys were fans, you remember. And so the movie came out and I, and this was my bestie. So I sent her money for a ticket to go see the movie. And, um, I said, listen, I know you don't have to be at the theater at the same time I am, but just wanted you to have it. And I will say she was like, thank you. That was so sweet. But she never followed up. She never told me if she went. She didn't really care, honestly, because at that time we were going through the tectonic plate shifting and she didn't really, she wasn't really invested. But I did go to the theater, the theater, <laughs> and I went alone. Because by the time the movie came out, the rage and the, everything was all over about Downton Abbey. So I sat alone in a theater, but I did text her. I called her and I was like, hey, bestie, you know, I'm here in a theater. Didn't get any answer or call back. I will tell you, the person who sent me this bottle of gin happened to just call me at that moment. 
She did not know that I was sitting in a theater. She did not know the angst and the pain that I was going through. I did not share with anybody what was going on. She did not know that I was like had done this really nice, you know, thing, just a little gesture for my friend and that I was hoping that it would, you know, help us rebond or solidify things as, you know, as adults, sometimes we grow apart. So she had no idea my level of investment and that I was sitting alone in the theater, which was so sad, <laughs> watching on the big screen as they rolled up and did a wide shot in with the uh, drone to High Clear Castle, which I had spent so many um, hours invested into the stories and the drama. So this castle is on the big screen and I'm watching it and I'm looking at it like coming closer into view. And then the person who sent me this bottle happens to call. She was like, I was just thinking about you, sweetie. Are you, is everything okay? Your angels tattled on you. She's very spiritually connected to me. And she was like, your angels tattled on you. And I just wanted you to know that I know that um, you may need a hello or what's going on. And I was like, oh, I'm fine. I'm in a movie. I'll call you back later. Didn't get deep into it with her. Okay. Let's fast forward. All right. Um, last year, like in the middle of the year or so, I was visiting with that friend and her husband and her family and everything. And she, pops in my room in the morning and she hands me coffee which is kind of one of my favorite things on earth she's a fantastic host and she hands me coffee and she says to me um so I just want you to know that I booked tickets for High Clear Castle for us to have high tea on your birthday now you guys know I'm a Leo so this was in I don't know June or July that she had done this or that, that I was visiting with her and that she had done this so she's like I just want you to know that I've done this and I was like what like I'm still waking up and I'm like hi Claire Castle for on my birthday hi tea because you guys I'm West Indian so tea's a big deal in my culture and all of that stuff British British West Indian so I was just delighted it was actually one of the nicest things it is the nicest thing anybody has ever done. It was so thoughtful. It was so kind. It was so empathetic. She did not know all the drama and the story with that girl. She didn't understand as far as she knew that was my best friend and she was off limits to discuss. However, meaning like the depths of it, you know, but what I will say is that she did this on her own. I didn't tell her uh, deeply about my obsession with High Clare Castle to that degree or anything, but she, and she certainly didn't know that I wanted to go with my bestie, but knew that it would never happen and materialize because she was a little, <laughs> y'all, let me just tell the truth. My bestie was a liar. <laughs> she was pathological. So I was like, this is, this is how, you know, God is in the midst of a thing because she had zero idea. So it was just the coolest thing to me that she's like handing me coffee and she's like, yep, we're going to High Clare Castle on your birthday. And I and I didn't have to do anything. Now, I will say this. We had already planned to go like on a European kind of vacation through several. I think it was Scotland, Ireland, and England. And we condensed it down because COVID was happening last year, as we remember. And we were just going to go to London. We booked our tickets. Everything was good. So we were already going to London. So it wasn't like she had planned the, the full thing. We had talked about it. We were both, uh, were um, what's the word? We both had, like consented that this is going to happen. We're going to go. It was a vacation we were planning. It was a girl's trip. However, dun, 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 guess what happened? COVID happened. And that two weeks later, all of America got grounded <laughs> and we were shut down and we couldn't travel and we couldn't go anywhere. And it turned into, you know, what happened? We were grounded. We were grounded in America. So um, we were sad. And like both of us like would text each other and mope for like weeks after we got grounded and no one could go anywhere. And we had to cancel and we had our vouchers and our tickets ready for the next time we travel when the world would open up. So we prayed that the world would open up and it is in fact beginning to open up. And so what I will tell you is at the beginning of this year, 2021, just randomly, this showed up in the mail with a little note. And I want to, I'm saying this to you guys, because if you need to transpose this onto a romantic thing, please do. But if it's just a friendship and you're like, I've never had a friend be to me the way that I am to friends. This is the first time in my life that I have a friend who is to me the way that I am to friends above and beyond in ways that takes my breath away all the time. And I'm like, is this my life? So she sent a little note with it and it says, here's to our London adventure. Cheers. And then she put her name and, um, 
I was just uh, absolutely delighted when I opened the box. I was like, what is this? First of all, I was like, it's gin. Yes, thank you, whenever I'm ready for a cocktail. And God, who hasn't needed several during this pandemic? But um, that's not my natural pro proclivity, really, for the drink. But I was like, oh, my God, and it's gorgeous, and it's blue. And then I looked at it, and it's High Clare Castle. Do you guys see the full 360? I released a friendship where I would have never, ever, 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 ever in a million years. It would have been me doing the planning. It would have been me making the trip. It would have been me saying, sweetie, let's make this work and you can do it. It would have been me like having to call her parents and cajole her when she had a panic attack about it. And I, and, and the panic attacks were now that I re reflect back. It's not to say that she wasn't genuinely panicked or didn't have anxiety. I will never try to take that from her. But what I will say is it was control tactics because leaving a vacation in the middle of a vacation with a friend that you plan for months and months to go to is rude. Leaving early just because you feel like it because you didn't get your way is bratty. These were tantrum-esque behaviors. It was control tactics and methods to make me feel bad because she felt bad and she just wanted to share that. If you cut an orange, all you get out of it is orange juice. Well, if you cut a hater, what do you get? Hate and misery. And that's what she wanted to pass on. But again, let's not dwell there. That happened. That's over. And when I released that friendship, I remember thinking like, I, you know, I cultivated a friendship for 20 years. It goes right out the freaking window because she's a maniac and I can't reason with her and she won't communicate and we're not having adult interactions. God, I don't have 20 more years to build another friendship. But what had been happening with this beautiful human is that I was having a friendship with her for years before. Years and years before we were friends but I essentially emotionally kept my distance because I'm very loyal. I had a bestie and I was like, I'm not transposing. I'm not mixing. I honor my friendships. I think you can have a multiplicity of friendships, but the Leo and the Taurus moon in me um, definitely believes in seniority and putting in your time and all of that stuff. And no one comes in, no one cuts the line in my energy field. Like if I love you and I've been friends with you for years, I love you. And I've been friends with you for years and I'm never going to disrespect it because I've had it happen to me so many times. For those of you that have watched this channel you know that I have Scorpio in my eighth house which rules uh friendships and um sudden changes and taxes and things like that Scorpio also rules other people's money and all of the rest of it but for me where it hit was in the sudden changes with friendships so the thing that I had to learn was non-attachment and non-codependency I was incredibly toxic and codependent I was toxic so I'm gonna just say that we all can have been somebody's karmic we all have been somebody's toxic partner I was toxic in my relationship with my ex best right um she was toxic with me too but i have to own the part where i was too much or i did a lot uh an empath listening we have a tendency to do that so god has made it so with that placement in my chart that friendships end abruptly and brutally and usually they choose somebody else over me after i've been the kind of friend that would do a thing like this over and over and over i showed up in their life and i love them and i nurture them sound familiar guys sound like your life a little bit um and that's something Something that I struggle with. I'm like, God, when am I ever going to have somebody who values me or who loves me or who cares about me? I have my little tantrums, you know, and I did that. But what God was doing the whole time was moving someone who no longer vibrated on my alignment. I don't think we ever did. I think we trauma bonded out of the way. And he also, listen, all's fair in love and war. He gave her someone that was more like her. That's a quick little thing too. When a lot of us are like in third party situations of any kind, whether it's from friendship or romantic, we're like, why did they choose the other person? What's wrong with me? They chose the other person because they were more like them. I have a video here called Water Finds Its Own Level. And we always are focusing on the negative, like, well, they're better off with each other and all that drama. But listen, who are you better off with? See, they find their own level and we freak out about it because we're clinging on. I have a video coming up about a dream God gave me that he backed up with a YouTube video. I'll connect the video below. But we're clinging on while we rip tendons in our emotional body and we tear our chakras and we disalign ourselves. And what I will tell you is... I released it and it was tough and it hurt my feelings and all that jazz. And then as time went on, I was like, oh, this should have been released a long time ago. I totally get what happened. But the thing that I was bitter, that's the word, y'all, that I was bitter about 
was that I didn't feel like I got to have what I had given her. I was like, for 20 years, this girl benefited from the best that I could give her. Even when I was in low spots and miserable spots and impoverished and whatever, I still, we vacationed together when we had shoestring money, literally. And I insisted on it. I was like, I like a vacation just with my bestie by myself. That's an important thing for me. Um, I don't always want 75, 50, 11 people. Y'all, We that's my Leo energy. And sometimes a big girl's trip with multiple people is really nice. But I made that a priority with that person. And I thought, how am I ever going to get that back? We're too old now. It's just not going to happen. She was grandfathered into a lower vibrational me. See, the reason also message that your ex D bestie or your ex partner or whoever you were dealing with, you start to see them differently. It's because you've changed because I was just like her. I was just as low vibrational, just as thought pockety, just as all of the things. May I wasn't a pathological liar, but I definitely had similarities with her where we related in our trauma bond. And I grew up and I healed and I evolved and I evolved and that no longer fit my narrative and fit for me. I always used to teach her this lesson. If you no longer are like each other, you will vibrate out of each other's energy field. We wouldn't even be able to have a conversation. What would we talk about? Because I'm not where she is and she's not where I am. And that's why I want to say is I want you to focus on where are you going? Who is your Becky with the good hair? I was devastated to the nation because of what happened in that situation and who her choice was and how it went down and the person was racist and I was hurt. And God sent me somebody, I have a video coming up about what allyship looks like. And I had several friends in this last year send me books about the black experience. They are Caucasian people who truly were allies. And they were really trying to relate to me and check on me in the wake of all the devastation and violence that we saw happen with the lives that were lost, with George Floyd, et cetera, et cetera. I had people that reached out to me and really connected with me. And the XD Bessie that I had would diminish my experience and say, oh, maybe you're making too much of it because the person and the people that she aligned with also thought that maybe black people are making too much of it. Maybe they should stay in their place. Maybe they shouldn't kneel. You see, we saw Colin Kaepernick kneel. And then we also saw George Floyd die under a knee. That's what he was kneeling for. I know this took a turn, but if you have any place to speak, you must speak the truth. I am sojourner in this, but back to the friendly part. What this lesson is, is God will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. In that friendship, I was trying to foster family. I was trying to foster connection. I was trying to love her kid. I was trying to love her. I was trying to show up for them integrally. I was withholding my own carnal energy. I was withholding my own lower vibration so that I could have something that was really good and, and, and magical, right? And she um, did not value it, which sucks, right? Sometimes people don't see her value. That's okay. T.D. Jakes has a great sermon. If I can find it, I'll link it below. Called, are you a 10-gallon hat person? I don't know if that's exactly the name of it. But he's essentially saying, if you are a 10-gallon hat person, why are you asking somebody who has on a fedora to fill you up? All they know is fedora life, yeah? And so with this beautiful gift and gesture from a wonderful person. It was classy. It was also the way that I operate in my friendships. I cause my friends to manifest by having them look forward to the thing that is beautiful to them. And I've never talked to this friend about my style of it or what I do, but she did what I do without ever having a conversation. This is something I would have done. I would have sent something so that you could start to manifest and think about the fact that we're going to be in London in a few months and we will. <laughs> For my birthday this year, I imagine we were going to actually make it out of the country this year. Knock on wood, y'all. Knock on wood. But um, I realized that God fortified, re-fortified a relationship for me and in ways that were so specific the person um xd bestie her kid her that name started with an e and there's a new little e person that is right about the age when i met my xd bestie 20 years ago the same age that her child was he was a toddler and there's a new little toddler that i get to spoil and love who says sweet things like auntie monette i love your purple hair <laughs> and i love her and i get to spend time with her and nurture that relationship and be a support to my friend as she moves into that new phase of her life. And 
she's not having a baby. This is a uh, glamma duties, but still, I'm su and, uh, super young and an amazing glamma. And and what I will tell you is that I never thought I would get this back. That was what was so hard for me to walk away from was oh my god I'm losing a whole family unit here like how does she not value this how does she not see this I didn't understand it and I never will I will never know from her mouth what happened or what was going on in her head but my god said to me do you trust me daughter can you put down the thing that has been a pacifier to you can you walk away and trust that if I say I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten that I've never lied and he never did. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And even though I was friends with this person prior to um, leaving this friendship for years, I did not see, I did not see what he was doing. I did not see it. Now, the higher lesson here is I didn't have to, you know how they say go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. In the last few years in that friendship, I felt like I was merely being tolerated. I felt like she felt like I was the bad guy and it was so confusing for me because I'd only ever been loyal and true with her. And um, I didn't understand. And in this situation, I'm included. I didn't have to beg to be part of the family. I didn't have to foster it. I didn't have to put in so much effort. Uh, I'm on the wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, you have a family picture wall. I went to her house and I was on the wall and I was like, oh, I'm on the wall. She's like, yeah, you're family. Everything has been easier. And the reason I say this is because a lot of you guys are in the struggle love, if it's romantic or struggle friendship love, if it's a friend and you're working so hard. I worked so hard. I should have been a skinny bit <laughs> for the way that I worked in that relationship to get her to see my value and to make sure her kid felt bonded and connected and to make sure she felt loved and special and to honor her private time with her kid. And like I went above and beyond and I'm not exaggerating even an inch. I went so above and beyond. And when the thing is right for you, you don't have to beg for it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to um, cajole. You don't have to pray. Someone looks you right in your face and they're like, yeah. A conversation that me and this friend have had is like, I'm going to support you in your things. When you want to do something, I'm going to say yes. At the top of the year last year, before COVID, right before we knew what COVID was, like in uh, January, we were scheduled to go uh, and be in Turks and Caicos and go whale watching because that's a dream she had. And I was like, yeah, I support you. Let's go. Turks and Caicos, whales, I'm there. And it didn't happen because COVID happened, crushed in on us and everything got canceled and nothing went the way that it was supposed to go. But you saw the videos here, guys, of me being out with family my family that part of an extended family for me in california we did not see whales that we tried but we did see dolphins and dolphins have to do with play it has to do with friendship it has to do with having fun it has to do with being in your proper aggregates a lot of us spend time in groups that are not necessarily suited to us anymore dolphins naturally group together with the dolphins that are going through their same journey so this uh friend my dolphin she and i can travel and do all these things we have very similar interests that's another thing and another thing um but dolphins when they're doing it like if the pregnant dolphins stay together the teenage male dolphins stay together the 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 widowed <laughs> elder dolphin ladies stay together this has been studied and i know this because i grew up in the keys and i'm super like super nerd about marine biology and stuff but what I will say is with that beautiful coral reef, one of the two in the world major ones, the other one being in Australia. And what I will tell you is that this dolphin energy came into my life and maybe for some of you it needs to come in, but it doesn't come in until you realize, oh, that's no longer my thing. My ex bestie wanted to party and play and have fun. We were the same. She's a year younger than me and I was ready for a whole, I'm on a whole nother level. That wasn't where I was at. And I was trying to like communicate because I'm not an abandoner, you know? So I was like, maybe we can talk about this. Maybe we can figure it out. But she just shut down because she wanted what she wanted and that's okay. I deserve what I got. <laughs> And that's because I called it in. And that's because I cried over it. And that's because I prayed over it. And that's because before I even left the relationship, I said, God, I'm going to stand on your word and trust that you will do what you say. And now, like I said, I don't have to fight for inclusion. I have someone who is not only sympathetic to my racial plight, even though she is not of my race. She is sympathetic to my emotional plight. And forget about plights and sadness. She's just kind. 
She's just generous. As generous as me, Oak overgives me. We have ridiculous Venmo fights all the time. Um, and I feel like for the first time in my life, I am equally yoked. We like the same things. That's something that you don't have to like everything that your partner likes or your bestie likes. You guys have your differences, your individuals. But I know if she and I go out to eat with her family or if it's just she and I, uh, more than likely seafood's going to be on the table. That's kind of one of our favorite things. My exie Bessie hated seafood. It, her son liked it. I would cook it for him. But she hated it. And I'm not saying that that's bad. You're allowed to not like everything. But me and this person can be on a vacation and come out at different ends of the house and have on the same dress. And it happens over and over and over. Our shoe size is the same. It's all of the most beautiful things that you would want any bestie without all the drama guys release what you think you can't and uh, see what kind of magical things might show up for you you've got mail <laughs> maybe you've got a better male energy if it's a lover that you're seeking or a female hello we're all inclusive here or maybe you've got a better friend energy like what showed up in my life just better just in the heads and shoulders above. It's not, see, there was a lot of comparison as we exited our relationship that she was doing with me. A lot of triangulation, a lot of pitting me against somebody unbeknownst to me, right? You guys know my story if you've been here. But what I will tell you is I did not do that. I would not, even this lovely human, I never compared her to her. But a contrast was shown to me. It was so hard to love my ex bestie. She made it so bloody hard. Bloody. We're getting ready. Pinkies up, bitches. We're getting ready for London, right? She made it so bloody hard. And um, God showed me. I didn't have to ask. This person says, yes, they support. They believe in dreams. Anything that I say I want to do, she's like, why not? Anytime that I want to make a move, she's like, of course, let's make it. A quick note about long distance relationships. I may make a separate video about this. Long distance friendships are seemingly what is in my chart that happens to deal with that Scorpio and Uranus having to really work for a thing or really, you know, regarding friendships and stuff. My exy bestie lived far away. This person was far away, about the same distance away in different directions. And with my exy bestie, we did see each other and whatever, but it was because I would like cajole and I would be like, let's make this happen. And I would be very focused in that. Right. And, um, and again, like I said, there weren't too many times that we actually hung out where she didn't on some level sabotage it with some kind of there was a couple of times I'm not going to say that we had some very nice times that's you know I want to be very fair and honest there but there, there are so many memories I have of her either silent treating me because of her covert narcissism or or just leaving earlier because she had a tantrum and after I put in so much time and effort I don't worry about that with that with with this person um but I don't even remember I lost my train of thought here oh long distance but the distance she always that was a big deal now there was a lot of mitigating factors in the last few years why she couldn't travel as much as she tried to pretend that she wouldn't but what i will tell you is this person lives just as far she's driven in to see me she's flown in to see me i've flown into seeing her i've gone with my husband i've gone by myself uh we, we've flown across the country we met up we went to california we uh we, she just drove in recently and we did like a whole thing up the coast we met up with my husband we went in Airbnb with other friends and family we saw my other family my sister that's battling with cancer like just she's family and she's flown in or yeah i think she flew in and we took my mom on a mother's day picnic just because and in a few weeks we'll be heading off to do another bucket list thing that my mom wanted to do I'll be filming and showing you guys that she makes dreams come true a friend in your life should do that I've been that friend and if you're an empath watching you've been that friend but don't you think that you deserve to have that friend I felt that I did and I took a risk and I could not have asked for better this is good. I also dealt with attachment with this. So this is something I've said to her. If we are not in each other's life forever, I want you to extract the best from whatever we do while we are together. And I want us to be able to talk and at least communicate what's going on. And we do. The long distance travel thing, not an issue. When someone's invested in you, they make the effort. I never had to beg her. I never had to ask her if she was going somewhere. Hey, do you want to come? <laughs> Y'all saw me at the Biltmore. We were there together with her daughter. We had a great time. It was easy. It was just like, hey, let's hang out. It's easy. She makes the time for me 
because that's what a good friend does. Even if you can't do it as frequently, in fact, in COVID year, when I saw nobody, she and I probably saw each other 15 times last year, which was like, I felt like I saw her almost every month, <laughs> okay? Um, and it was great when I needed help with things. She was like, I got you, I'm, I'm driving down, I'm there, I'm on my way. It's just a different energy, guys. And that's what I want you guys to realize. Of course you can manifest this. I didn't know it was coming. I didn't expect it. And I was in my deep sadness because I did not think throw away your other friend for another friend. Never, ever, ever. In fact, I was shocked at all how it went down, as you guys know. But here's the thing. It went down for a reason because now I know. And if this person's only in my life for a few years, she was here to teach me this lesson that, of course, what the Bible says is surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, empath. If you have given up years of your life loving everybody else, accept kindnesses from people that want to love you and reciprocate, okay? I reciprocate, but um, accept kindnesses from people that want to love you because you've put in the work. This is in your financial or spiritual escrow. You have deposited good love and energy, first half, second half. First half of my life, I gave a lot of energy away to people that didn't appreciate it. Second half, I protect my energy. And magically, beautiful things like this show up for me all the time. And I do appreciate it. And I appreciate that person. And I appreciate God who blessed me, but challenged me to let go of things that could never be this for me, ever. That's the message today, guys. God will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. It's so good to share some energy and to see your faces again. Comment below. I want you to know at 5,000 subscribers, I will be giving away uh, five readings. Okay, five 30 baby readings. Okay, all you have to do is be subscribed and comment below. However, comment of the month is also qualified for a mini read. So we will do a 10 minute mini read. So if you comment below and uh, we'll just see how that goes, that's how you enter in for that. Be subscribed, comment below. And once a month for the next 11 months of this year, I will pick one person to have a 10 minute free mini read with. I actually have an appointment with somebody on Monday who blew my soul open and touched my heart. That's all guys. Come back and join me next time. And we will continue to evolve together.